Hello friends, welcome back to our video lecture series on course title fluid mechanics 2. As we have started previously, new topic. In this lecture, uh, we will be discussing various assumptions uh, under the topic of centrifugal pump. So, various assumptions which are made while deriving the equation for the work done per second by the impeller on the fluid and velocity vector diagram for the centrifugal pump. So, before proceeding for the discussion of assumption, let's uh, revise what we have discussed previously. So, we have discussed how the centrifugal pump is work. It is uh, basically working on the principle of uh, forced vertex flow uh, where the mechanical energy will be supplied uh, to this uh, impeller through the shaft to which it is coupled and the center uh, where the shaft uh, is there that is also known as eye of the impeller and now uh, the, when this impeller start rotating of course there will be development of suction head and due to the development of suction head water will taken from the source of water or sump of water to the eye of the impeller and it will also start to rotate along with the this backward curved winds of the impeller now uh, when that water is rotating of course there would be a development of centrifugal force on that water and due to that it will be pushed in outward direction away from the central axis where it is rotating and uh, when it is moving towards the outer part it will reach to the casing now this casing is having a gradually increasing area of flow and due to that whatever my kinetic energy of water will be converted into the pressure energy and as i am moving away and away towards the delivery pipe of course my pressure will goes on increasing and at the outlet of casing my pressure will reach to the maximum value now uh, whenever we are going to derive the equation for the uh, work done per second by the impeller uh, on the fluid in that case of course we need to consider here whatever the angular momentum which is taking place that means the torque which is getting developed here which is exerted by those radial curved uh, backward curved winds uh, which are exerting on the water and uh, whatever we have discussed uh, during the uh, discussion of the turbine uh, we have discussed that uh, force is exerted by the jet or jet of fluid on the curved wind but in this case uh, the condition is reverse in this case our impeller winds are going to exert force on the fluid so uh, whatever the condition we have discussed while calculating force f of x like say is equal to rate of change of momentum that was given by mass per second multiplied by initial momentum minus final momentum but in this case that would be a different because here our impeller or veins of the impeller exerting force on the liquid and that's why in this case that force can be calculated by considering the same expression rate of change of momentum that is impulse momentum principle but in this case our expression would be modified as final momentum minus initial momentum so while deriving this equation for the force and work done per second what are the assumption that has been made so let's discuss those assumption uh, liquid enters the impeller i in the radial direction if it is entering in the radial direction then of course our whirl component velocity that is velocity of whirl vw1 of the inlet velocity v1 that is it is uh, horizontal component of inlet velocity v1 it, it will be equal to 0 and whatever my velocity of flow that would be equal to v1 that means that our alpha would be equal to 90 degree in this case so whenever we are going to draw velocity triangle at that time whatever our alpha is equal to 90 degree now no energy loss which is going to take place in the impeller due to the friction and eddy formation so there would be no energy loss which is going to take place uh, due to the friction or due to the eddy formation when my water is moving through the impeller of the pump no loss due to shock at the entry so whenever my water is entering towards the uh, impeller or towards the casing at that time there would be no loss uh, which is going to take place due to the shock and the last one there is a uniform velocity distribution in the narrow passage formed between two adjacent vanes so whatever the narrow space available in between those two vanes my velocity distribution is uniform and this would make us to uh, make it more simple because if this velocity is not uniformly distributed then it will become more complex to derive that expression for the uh, force or work done per second by the impeller on the fluid so that is our last assumption that uh, velocity distribution whatever the velocity of the uh, flow which is flowing through these uh, veins that is uniform now there is a, another important concept uh, in case of centrifugal pump that is concept of angular momentum now in this case uh, my whatever the force will be exerted in the rotational direction that means that it in the angular direction so at that time we need to determine the torque and while determining torque we should have an idea about what is angular momentum so for better understanding of the angular momentum let us consider a particular object having mass m which is uh, uh, rotating around this circle with an 
angular velocity omega so let us consider our one object having mass m rotating around the circular path with an angular velocity omega now if i draw the tangent at any instance then i would get the tangential velocity here so let us consider v is the tangential velocity of that object at any point on that circular direction or circular path of the object now if i am considering this uh, tangential velocity and if i am considering this mass then my linear momentum or linear momentum of the object is given by the equation momentum is equal to mass into velocity now our angular uh, momentum is defined as it is the moment of momentum which is called as angular momentum so if we take the moment of this uh, linear momentum then we would get angular momentum so our angular momentum is given by moment of momentum which is equal to momentum multiplied by radius so this is my linear momentum mass into velocity and its moment if i am going to take as the center then it will become mass into velocity multiplied by radius so mass into velocity multiplied by radius so whatever my equation for the angular momentum which is coming out as mass into velocity multiplied by radius around which my object is uh, around which circle my object is rotating so this is what the concept of our angular momentum now let's move towards the uh, computation of velocity vector diagram now whatever we have discussed that in case of centrifugal pump or in case of pumps our expression for the work done per second by the impeller of, of the pump on the liquid flowing through it may be derived by the same as we have the turbine only the difference is that here our impeller is going to exert a force on the water that is work done by the impeller on water in case of centrifugal pump because previously it was something like that my jet was coming and striking on the curved vein of the uh, turbine so in in that case my fluid was exerting force on the curved vein but in this case my impeller exerting force on the liquid now this work done expression can be easily derived by drawing velocity triangle at the inlet and at the outlet now remember one thing what we have uh, assumed that liquid enters at the impeller at its center and leaves at the its outer periphery so my liquid going to enter radially and due to that radial entry of course whatever my velocity of whirl component of velocity of whirl will become equal to zero because our alpha is equal to 90 degrees so this would be our velocity vector diagram at the inlet and at the outlet so Uh, this is the circular path around which my this impeller is rotating, and this is the tangent that I have drawn at the inlet and at the outlet. Those are the inlet tangent and outlet tangent. Now the first component that we should draw that will be the v one that is coming uh, in the radial direction. That means that your alpha will be equal to 90 degree, and our v of one will be equal to v w v one. Our v w one will be equal to zero. R one and R two are the uh, radius of the uh, this impeller at the inlet and at the outlet. Now v r one uh, is the relative velocity at the inlet, which is making an angle theta with respect to the horizontal, and u one is the tangential velocity. at the inlet so it is the velocity in the tangential direction at the inlet now if we move towards the outlet the first component which is coming is the v r2 which is making an angle phi with respect to horizontal and the next one is the v2 that is the absolute velocity at the outlet and if you resolve that absolute velocity in the two direction what we are getting here that would be our v uh, uh, v f2 and v w2 velocity of flow at the outlet and velocity of whirl at the outlet and this beta is the angle made by absolute velocity with the horizontal or with the direction of motion and this u2 is the tangential velocity at the outlet i remember that in this case whatever our radius that it's r1 and r2 both are different that mean that whatever my tangential velocity u1 and u2 both would be different and that can be calculated by using uh, angular speed that is given by u1 is equal to omega multiplied by r1 and u2 is given by omega multiplied by r2 where this omega is the angular speed and can be easily computed by taking an expression 2 pi n divided by 60 where this n is the speed in revolution per minute and now of course whatever the n can be easily calculate by taking expression 60f upon p where f is the frequency and this p is the power so this is how you can uh, calculate this u1 and u2 so uh, we will be discussing in next lecture work done per second by the impeller on the water so thank you for watching